Greetings again today in that name that's far above every name. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you here in the house of the Lord today. We welcome everyone. We appreciate our visitors. Appreciate our members. We're glad you're here with us in God's house. May God bless you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be an inspiration to thousands in the radio listening audience. So if you're out there listening in as a shut-in and you have a friend that's a shut-in, they don't know about the broadcast, have them to tune into the station and pick up the hour coming up and we'll try to be a blessing to them. Now if you have your Bible, turn would you please to Genesis chapter 19. I'm speaking to you today on this subject. She was caught in a draft, died in a twist, and became her own tombstone. Now this will be tape number 187. We have both, we'll have both the message and the music on the tape today. And you can write in and get these tapes for $3 each. And if you request it, I'll send you a list of our cassette tape. I have 186 listed here. And you can write in and get a list and choose the ones you'd like to have. And write in and get our proposed uh, brochure for a Holy Land tour. Proposed Holy Land tour brochure on it for the coming year. And we'd be glad to send these things to you. And uh, if you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you will tune into the station where you're now listening at 12 o'clock noon each day, Monday through Saturday, you can get the daily broadcast. If God permits us to preach daily on the radio until the last day of August of this year, that we'll have completed 37 full years of daily broadcasting the gospel from the classic city of Athens, Georgia. I thank God for that open door and for his people that's worked with us in getting out the gospel. So you pray for me and write to me. Just address your mail to Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. Takes a lot of patience, a lot of determination as we fight the devil. I'm reminded of this man that drove his pickup into the hospital lot, went into the hospital, and the receptionist told him to sit down and should be with him in a few minutes. He sat there about 45 minutes. He was called over the desk. And she said, what can I do for you? He said, I have the shingles. And she said, all right, then uh, uh, give me your name, your address, and let me have your social security number, and uh, let me have your insurance uh, companies that, you, that have you covered and so forth. And she sat down there in several minutes. She got all the information. And when she finished with him, she said to come and go in the next room and Went in the next room. She said, be seated. Someone will wait on you in a few minutes. He sat there about 45 minutes. Lady came over and said, uh, I understand you have the shingles. He said, that's right. And she said, all right, come on in and take off your coat and your shirt, your undershirt. And there she checked his heart, checked his blood test, blood pressure other. Looked in his eyes, his ears. Took some blood from the end of his finger. And then uh, she said, that's fine. And just move out here in the next office and the doctor will be with you immediately. So he went out there and waited about 45 minutes. Doctor came in and said, well, I understand you have the shingles. He said, that's right. He said, all right. Uh, he began to check him. And he said, well, uh, you'll just, I'll have to ask you to pull off your trousers and your underclothes and put this gown on and get on the table here. And so the poor fellow did that. And so after he'd gotten on the table, the doctor checked him out and he said, uh, and you said you have the shingles? He said, yes, sir. He said, I, I have the shingles. He said, they're out there on the truck. He said, where do you want me to put them? <laughs> Genesis chapter 19, beginning with verse 14. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-laws, which married his daughters, and said, up and get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. And when the morning was arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise and take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. 
While he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, upon the hand of his wife, upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord been merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, also thou wilt not overthrow this city for which thou hast spoken. Haste, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. And the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of the city and that which is upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind and she became a pillar of salt. Now that's as far as I'm reading. But I want to give you one other verse of scripture. In Luke chapter 17, and Luke writing under the inspiration, there quoting the Lord Jesus, there we find that talking about the end time, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. That's all he said in verse 32 of Luke chapter 17. Now Lot's wife is the woman that was caught in a draft. They drafted her, they took her, they pulled her out. And then she turned and looked back. That is, she made a twist. She turned and she looked back and she died in that twist. She was caught in a draft and she died in a twist and she became her own tombstone. There she was turned into a pillar of salt. Now I want to speak to you today about Lot's wife. I think it's very timely. Jesus said in the end time, remember Lot's wife. I want you to notice, number one, her residence. Now, in verse 13 of the scripture I read, it said, We will destroy this place. Now, here is a dear woman and a family dwelling in a place that God said he's going to destroy. We will destroy this place. How would you feel today if you were living in a place you knew that would soon be destroyed? She lived in that kind of city. And she lived also in a corrupt city because in Genesis chapter 18, verses 20 and 21, and the Lord said, because the crowd of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because there is sin, their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which has come upon me, and if not, I will know. So she was living there in a very, very corrupt city, a city more or less like Los Angeles, California and other cities we can name today. Very wicked people dwell there and she lived there among these people. She lived among very, very wicked people. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 13 and verse 13, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. God said they were wicked. God said they were sinners, very wicked according to what God said here in the Bible. Not only that, but she lived in a condemned city, a city that God had marked out to be destroyed, a condemned city. In Luke chapter 17, verse 29, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fine brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. A city marked by God, a condemned city, a wicked city, a city that God said must be destroyed. And when Lot finally got his wife and two daughters out of there, leaving others in the city, of course, then God dropped the atomic bomb and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So, you know, we notice her residence. Now, number two, let's notice her opportunity. Here's a woman that had an opportunity. No doubt about that. We find in verse 15 where he says, Take thy wife. Now, she did not want to leave there, of course, but... The place is condemned and she had an opportunity to go. And he said to Lot, take thy wife. And she was caught in this draft. He took her by the hand to lead her out of this wicked place. Now she was prayed for by Abraham. Abraham had prayed for Lot and his family. No doubt about that. If you read Genesis chapter 18, verses 23 through 33, you'll find that Abraham had prayed for Lot's family. 
while they were down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. He was a great man of prayer and a great man of concern. So she uh, was taken by the hand to be led out. It says, take thy wife. And then she was prayed for. And then she was a wife of Lot, a righteous man. Now the Bible tells us that Lot was a righteous man. Now Lot had found himself in a backslidden condition. They're hobnobbing around with a worldly crowd and a wicked group. But he was a righteous man. He was a saved man. And he vexed his righteous soul every day listening to the filthy conversation of the Sodomites. Now some of you, while you work on your job, no doubt there's a lot of sinners, a lot of cursors, blasphemers. And it vexes your soul to have to hear that stuff and listen to it. And that makes it very bad, of course. Now Lot listened to the cursing and the carrying on and the blasphemies of the people there in Sodom. She was a wife of this righteous man, Sodom. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 through 8, And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Every day he had to listen to this stuff. There's a lot of things today that you have to listen to. A lot of things today that you don't want to listen to, but you're caught in a situation where you have to if you uh, maintain your job or livelihood. And it's pathetic, and yet it's true. And we know that happens. And so Lot was down here in Sodom, but he didn't have to stay there. He could have gotten out of that place. Now, she had an opportunity to escape and leave this place, but she chose to want to stay there. Lot could have gotten out of there, but he wanted to stay there. It was believed by many that he was the mayor of the city because he sat in the gate. And there he loved it. He'd gotten into politics and backslid on God. A lot of good men have gotten into politics and backslid on God. I know some today that walked with God and served God and got into politics and started running with that crowd and backslid on God. Now Lot was down there. And no doubt in politics and his family and society and there, he backslid on God. He was a saved man, a just man. He'd been justified by the power of God. He was a righteous man, but he was living among wicked people and compromising. That wasn't pleasing to the Lord. Number three, I want us to notice her knowledge in verse 20. This city is near, escaped thither. Now they talked about another little city not far away from there, and she knew about that. And, and she said, this city is near, escape thither. That is, she knew about the little city. If Lot made the statement, she knew about it. She had that knowledge, and she knew that it's a little city not far away where they could escape and get away from the fire and brimstone that came upon Sodom and Gomorrah. She knew the city was to be destroyed in verse 14. Get up out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. Now they said, get up and get out of here. God's going to destroy this place. She knew that. She knew God would eventually and very quickly destroy that place. She knew that was a place of safety, of course, because in verse 20, behold, now this city is near to flee unto. She knew if she got out of Sodom and Gomorrah, she could go to a place of safety with her husband and her two daughters, a little city not very far away. She knew the place of safety was near because in verse 20, this city is near to flee to, says the Bible. So here is a woman caught in a draft, died in a twist, became her own tombstone, and some things that she knew. She had this knowledge, and she knew that they had to get out of there. She knew they were condemned there in that city, and she knew there's a place of safety. She knew all of this, and of course, instead of doing that which was right, she did wrong, as we'll show you later. Number four. Let's notice her warning in verse 17. She was warned to escape for her life. Escape for thy life. If you want to live, then you must get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. If you want to live, you must get on the move. She is warned by God's messengers in verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened to Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Now, she was warned by God's angels, by these two angels, these messages of God that had come. And he said, Lot, you get your wife and your two daughters and get out of this place. 
She was warned about this. She knew it was coming. A lot of sinners today are being warned about the wrath of God. They're being warned about hell. They're being warned about the soon coming of Jesus Christ. They're being warned about they're going to die and face God in the judgment, but they go on their merry way, and they do not heed that warning. You need to heed that warning, dear soul. If you without God, you need to get right with God. One of these days, God will lift his church out, and God's wrath will fall on this world. Then we find she was warned to leave the condemned city in verse 17. Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all of this plain. She was warned to get completely out of there. Get away from there. Don't remain there. You know God's wrath must come. You must get to a place of safety. I can't understand why sinners today, and some listen to me right now, maybe here in the church, no doubt in the radio listening audience, you know that hell is moving beneath you to meet you at your going. You know if you die like you are, you're going to hell. You know that, many of you. Some of you don't believe in hell. That doesn't change the fact of it. Now, one of these days you must die. And if you die unsaved, hell will be your destination. You know that you're going someplace at death. You either go to heaven or hell. It all depends on whether or not you're saved when you die as to where you'll go. Now, she was warned about this condemned city. The Bible said the sinners are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the Son of God. And so already condemned. Now she was warned to leave the condemned situation. Lost sinners today knowing they're condemned. They're not going to be lost when they die. They're lost now. They're not going to be condemned when they die. They're condemned now. And they can get right with God if they so desire to get right with God. And she was warned about the city. And she was warned to leave instantly. Right away, don't tarry, don't wait. Get going right now. There's no time to waste. There's been many of a person very close to death and didn't realize it and refused to get right with God, left home and didn't come back anymore. Beloved, listen to me. You don't know when you're going out into eternity. You may leave this place today. You never reach, may never reach home. I've preached to people uh, since I've been in the ministry. I've been preaching the gospel now some 43 years. I, I preach to people that never, never reach home again. Went from the church to the hospital and the mortuary. Now, I'm not trying to intimidate you, but I'm giving you cold, cold facts today. It's upon the men once to die, and after that, the judgment. She was warned to leave instantly, right now. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. And in verse 22, it says, uh, Haste thee, escape thither. Get on the move. Don't play around. No time to play around. And it's the same way with sinners today. Some of you out there in the radio listen are sitting there with your family, your children there in the room and never get a chance to go to church or Sunday school. You never offer to read your Bible or pray with them. You never try to help the little fellas and they're growing up there without God. And God is most certainly going to hold you responsible. You need to get right with God. Get those children to get ready and get them into the church and Sunday school. Get them to God because God is holding you responsible. You need to realize that no time to waste. We're living in the last days, perilous times, dangerous days. And there's no time to play around about this matter of coming to God. Number five, let's notice her unbelief in verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him. And of course, she made a twist. She looked back as she was turned into a pillow of salt. Her unbelief came from her heart. Deep down in her heart. She wanted to look back. She knew that she had been warned not to look back. The angel said, don't you look back. Her husband said, don't you look back. But she was bound to look back. And from her heart, she turned and looked back because her heart was back there with her other children and son-in-laws and in that wicked city. The Bible says in, in Acts chapter 8, whenever the unit was saved and you have Philip preaching to him and talking to him about Jesus. And he asked him if he believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. He said he did. And he said he believed with all of his heart that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And he said, all right, let's get out of this carriage and get out here in the water and I'll baptize you. You're a good candidate for baptism. You've come to know God. You've got to believe in your heart 
in order to be saved. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 tells you, And it's from the heart that you do evil. And she from an unbelieving heart, he had turned and looked back, disobeying the angels, disobeying her husband. And there, because of unbelief, she was turned into a pillow of salt. Her unbelief revealed her love for Sodom. Now the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things in the world. Because all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the pride of life, not of God, but of the world. And if you believe in these things and love these things, you don't love God. And we're not to love the wicked, sinful, evil things of this world as a Christian. And so she loved the world. She loved Sodom. She loved Gomorrah. And she loved what she had there in Sodom. And so she, in unbelief, she turned and looked back. Her unbelief revealed where her treasure was. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where was her treasure? Her treasure was back there in Sodom and Gomorrah. No doubt she belonged to the socialites back there and the, the aristocratic crowd and the treetop society gang. And, and she belonged to that bunch, her husband, the mayor. And they were big shots there in Sodom. No doubt they pitched their bridge parties and drank their wine and had their dances and carried on in a wicked way. And she loved that place. Nothing like it as far as she is concerned. And her heart was back there in that place because she left some of her family back there. That's one reason. It's awful hard on her to only have two daughters coming out of there. There's at least ten people in Lot's family counting his in-laws. And there they left some of them and they died in that atomic bomb fire there. And so her heart was back there. And where your heart is, so shall your treasure be. And you need to remember that if your heart's with God, if your heart's in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, then, beloved, you want to make your way to God's house. And if your heart is not there, it's hard to get you to the house of God. You need to realize that your heart should be with God and in the house of God on the Lord's day and come in and worship. Let's notice number six, her destruction. Verse 26. She became a pillar of salt. That is, she became a tombstone. I've been over there 12 times around this area, the place that tell us where Sodom and Mar once uh, existed around the salt sea there and uh, uh, around where her, she was turned into a pillar of salt. I've been there some 12 times. The Lord willing, I plan to go back again in March of next year. But it's a salty area. And so she was turned into a pillar of salt. When she turned, when she made the twist, she was congealed. She was turned into a pillar of salt. She died instantly. And there she stood, a statue, Lot's wife, turning, looking back towards Sodom and Mar, and just a pillar of salt. Isn't that something? Now that place is called the salt sea or the salt area of the Bible. It's always been salty. 23% of that water is nothing but pure, pure salt. And so she turned into salt. A pillar of salt, the Bible tells us here. Her destruction came because she obeyed not the Lord's message. The Bible said we had to obey God's message. And so she became a pillar of salt because she believed a lie. The devil told her a lie and she uh, was turned into the pillar of salt. And the Bible said her destruction came instantly. Instantly. The very moment she turned and looked, she was turned into a pillar of salt. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 1, He that's often reproved and hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. I believe that's why a lot of people are cut off suddenly today. I don't say that's why all of them are cut off suddenly, but some, I believe, are carried away or cut off suddenly because they hardened their hearts, hardened their necks against God and the gospel. God saw they were not going to straighten out and they were cut off. I believe that's happening to people today all over the land. Her destruction came unexpectedly. She wasn't expecting to be turned into a pillow of salt. She didn't have the least idea that when she turned and looked back, that would be her end. But it was. Poor all sinners today get in their automobiles, drive up and down the highways at breakneck speed, and they're not realizing in a matter of seconds they could be killed on the highway. 
Very often you see people driving down the road, driving with one hand, a can of beer in the other. I'm going to say this, and this is no reflection on anybody that's disabled to drive a, a nice automobile. Don't misunderstand me. But most of the people you see today driving down the highway with a beer can in one hand, drinking, driving with the other hand, they're driving an old beat up automobile about ready to fall apart with Maypop tires on the bottom. Now, beloved, why, why are they driving that kind of junk down the road? They throw away their money buying beer and wine and whiskey and gambling and living like the devil. They don't have to drive that junk down the highway and jeopardize their lives and lives of others if they try to do right and quit buying that stinking beer and wine and liquor and gambling and cussing, save the money, they could buy them a decent car. But you check it. When you see a person driving down the road with a beer can in one hand and driving the car with the other hand and drinking, you look what kind of car he's riding in and stay pretty good way from the road because the wheel lie run off and hit you, run over you. Beloved, you need to be, I'm not, I'm not, don't misunderstand me. I'm not belittling anybody that's disabled to drive a good automobile. Don't misunderstand me. If you have a car, if that's the best you got, you do the best you can, God bless you. God speed to you. I'm talking about these fellows that just throw away their money and uh, could do better, but you don't do better. Now I'm telling you that whether you like it or not. And then we find number seven, her repentance. Or her remembrance, rather. Her distraction, and finally her remembrance. In Luke chapter 17, verse 32, remember Lot's wife. Now Jesus here was talking about the end time, and all of a sudden he said, remember Lot's wife. Now Lot's wife would fit in 100% with this live movement today. I just uh, assume if she was alive today, she had joined the ACLU, America's Cranky Lunatic Union. Uh, she, would, uh, she would be as wild as any group you ever saw if she was living today. And Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. So whenever you see the live movement action today, remember Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. That's the same identical kind of uh, stuff that was in Lot's wife uh, back in those days. We have it today in multitudes of women and sissy henpecked men over this nation. She's remembered because of her disobedience. She was disobedient. She was a disobedient woman. The Bible says you to be obedient to God and in subjection to your husband. She's remembered because of a tragic mistake. She made a terrible mistake. A terrible mistake. She was caught in a draft, died in a twist, became her own tombstone. What a terrible mistake. And she's remembered because of her example. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6, Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Beloved, when we remember Lot's wife and remember what was happening in those days, remember what Jesus is talking about when he said remember Lot's wife and apply that to where we stand today, there's no doubt about it. We're right at the end. Amen. If you're not ready to meet God, you ought to get ready. It's important to men wants to die and after that to judge. If you listen well, let us all stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray today that you'll take the message, that you'll use it, that your name might be honored, that Jesus might be glorified. No doubt as many, even in the radio listening audience like Lot's wife today, may even be some here in the auditorium. And I pray, oh God, that you'll take the message you laid on my heart to preach today and may much be accomplished to the glory of God. In Jesus' name I do ask it. Amen. Amen. Debbie's going to play for us. Now she plays upon the instrument. If you're here today unsaved, backslidden, you want to join this church where we receive members, or you want to come forward for any reason God prompts you to do so, while she's playing, would you come? You know whether or not God's spoken to you, would you come? Just obey the Lord. I brought the message God laid on my heart. It's up to you now. Just obey God and do what God tells you to do. People going out every day unprepared to meet God, cut off suddenly, heart attacks, wrecks, suicides. You never know. If you're not ready, now's the time to get ready. <laughs> 